Good morning, good morning, Rabotai. Welcome to Breakfast in the Class. Breakfast in the Class is dedicated in loving memory of Abraham and Tebi. Abraham Ben Simcha, sponsored by Joey Enav. Joey, we miss you. Breakfast in the Class is dedicated in loving memory of Robert Bob Ades. On his Askara, sponsored by his wife Esther Ades and family. And also dedicated in loving memory of Mara's son, Halava Shalom, Lilun Yishmat Moshe Ben Adel, sponsored by his son, Sammy Sutton. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, also, uh, we ask Hashem to give us a chut and refu ashlema for uh, Yaakov Ben Tamar Malka, who needs Rahame Shamaim, who needs our tefilot, and who needs our mitzvot. And Be'ezrat Hashem, all the wonderful things that are being done should result in refu ashlema, refu atanefesh, refu ataguf. Uh, for this young, for this young boy, and it's Simon Ezra. The pasuk says, "Marco bat Mary." The pasuk says, "Ushmartem et Shabbat ki kodesh ulachem." You should guard the Shabbat ki kodesh ulachem because it is holy; it is set aside for you. I want to quote you a very interesting Gemara. The Gemara says, Ilmale shameru Yisrael Shabbat Rishona, Lo shalta bahem uma velashon. No nation, no language, no one ever would have been able to have any power over the Jewish people if we had kept the first Shabbat. What's the first Shabbat? The first time they were commanded a Shabbat, what happened? The Pasuk tells us something very interesting. On that Shabbat, Yatsu, they went out to go and collect the man. You had the troublemakers. Moshe told the Jews, don't go out and collect on Shabbat, you can't do it. You know why? Number one, it's Asur. The Gemara actually asks, which milacha would it be to collect the man? Is it carrying? Is it tolesh? Is it uprooting? Is it me'amer? Uh, Is it winnowing? The Gemara asks, which one, which of the melachot it would have been to go out and collect the man. However, be that as it may, it's clear from the pasuk that it would have been breaking Shabbat to go get the man. And therefore, Hashem says to Moshe, don't worry, there's going to be a double portion on Friday. And in that merit, as we say, we, uh, we have uh, two candles, shamor v'zachor, two portions, etc., etc. Now, the Gemara says clearly, if only they had kept Shabbat, it would have resulted in no one being able to mess with the Jews. Shabbat would have been a protective cover against the Jews. And how does the Gemara know that? Because immediately following this story of the Jewish people going to get the man, going out to collect, they went out, and they did not find. Immediately after that, the Pasuk says, Vayavo. Amalek. And Amalek came and attacked the Jews. So what do we see from here? We see that they didn't listen to Moshe. They went to go collect the man. And Amalek came. Obviously, you see from here, says the Gemara, if they would have kept Shabbat properly, it would have protected them from Amalek. By the way, the Gemara here is employing a method that we learn about and already in Pirkei Abot. In Pirkei Abot it says, Mitzvah, Goreret mitzvah. Avera, goreret, avera. What happens after a mitzvah? What comes in the aftermath? A mitzvah pulls along another mitzvah. What happens in the aftermath of an avera? Avera pulls along another avera. Say the Ba'alim Musa is something unbelievable. There are times when it's clear to you what a mitzvah is and what an avera is. But there are times in your life when you're not choosing between good and bad, you're not sure what the right thing to do is. You don't know if yelling at this person was a mitzvah because it's going to make him better, or maybe yelling at him was an avera, was you losing your temper. Sometimes it's not so clear. Did me giving this poor guy a talking to and not giving him tzedakah, avon or mitzvah, because I got him to get up, go get a job, you have these people, oh, he's never going to learn. Is that, what, is that what your intention is, or are you just stingy? You don't want to give any more tzedakah. <laughs> so sometimes you're not sure. Is what I did a mitzvah or tzedakah? Say the Ba'alei Musar, 
You know what the litmus test is? Go see what the thing that happens after that deed is. If the next thing you do is a mitzvah, then you know that the first thing was a mitzvah. Because mitzvah goreh mitzvah. If the next thing that happens to you is a avon, then you know the thing you did was avon. Because avera goreh avera. So too, over here, the Gemara is now analyzing the fact that the outcome of this story was vayavo amalek. It was a punishment. So it can't be that from the good, from uh, uh, something proper came something improper. So therefore we know, Ilmale shameru Yisrael Shabbat Rishona, if they had kept the first Shabbat, lo shalta bahem uma velashon. Asks the Aperion Shilomo a bomb. Ready for this? He looks like he got the bomb. Rohi, what's the bomb? You, you look like you were saying to your father what the bomb was. I thought you got it. No, you think you got it? No. What's the bomb? What do you mean they didn't keep Shabbat? Velomatsau. They went out. They didn't find. They didn't break Shabbat. They wanted to, but they didn't. So what's the last shona the Gemara? Il Malesh Amiru Yisrael Shabbat Rishonah. If only they'd kept the first Shabbat. They did keep the first Shabbat. If you think to yourself, you know what? I want to catch an Uber home from Shul. Right? I want to catch a cab. Sorry, that uh, Uber is not going to work. Bad example. But, you know, you have to use your phone to call it. Right? You say, I want to catch a cab home from Shul. You look at it, walk out on the street, not a car on the road. Did you break Shabbat? You didn't. You wanted to. Who cares? That's not Shabbat Shabbat, dude. That's the issue of Emunah. That's something else. Got me? Listen to this, Rabotai. There's something here that is so special. It's a bomb question, but it's also a bomb answer. The answer is... <clears throat> the answer is derived from another place where we use the same language. What does it say? Does it say that they broke Shabbat? Il <laughs> If only... Shameru Yisrael. Shameru means they guarded. Now we have another place in Judaism, in Halakha, where we have the word Shmira. Good, that's a good, that's another place. That's Shabbat. What's the third one? It's not, it's not pronounced Shmira. It's pronounced Shmura. Matzah Shmura. Ushmartem. So we find this idea also by Matzah Shimura. What is the idea of guarding Matzot? We have to guard the Matzot that they do not become Chametz. Now, I want to share with you a crazy Bi'ur Halakha. The Bi'ur Halakha writes a fascinating Halakha. When, when do we know the Halakha says, when is Matzah Shimura from? So when you buy Matzah, if the matzah is kosher, it's shmurat to some level. The question is, is it mishat techina? Is it from the time of the grinding of the, of the wheat? Or is it mishat ketzira, from the time of the cutting of the wheat? Ordinary matzah, which we do not call matzah shmura, is from when? From the time when they're grinding, much later. The higher level matzah shmura, that we, that's what we're talking about, is already from the time they cut the, the, the wheat. There's someone who guards it, who makes sure it doesn't get wet, nothing happens, no one non-Jewish comes and sprays it with water, as if that's something they would do. <laughs> Says the Bi'ur Halakha, fascinating question. Siman Taf Nun Gimel, he says, ask the question, is, are you allowed to send matzah, sorry, so let's say I took kemach, uh, a flour, that was ground, it was shmura misha techina, from the time of grinding, not from the time of cutting. There's no Jews on the train. Allowed or not allowed? Says the Biur Halakha, I'm going to quote to you his language. 
אף שאין לנו לחוש להחלפה של קמח הזה. Even though we are not, we do not believe that anyone is coming, swapping all in some sort of weird, you know, uh, you know uh, plot twist. Swapping the entire train full of Kemach with another train full of Kemach. We don't think that that's going to happen. We're not, we're not concerned about that. We also don't think that the train is going to have a leak in the roof and, and, the, and that the water is going to come down and it's going to turn We're not concerned. We don't, we don't, we're not worried about that. We're not concerned. Mikol makom. Zelon nikra shemira lehedya. It is Shamur, maybe. But you didn't Shomer it. Maybe it's protected from those things. But if the Torah says Vishamiru, it means you guard. At this moment, the wheat is not guarded. The wheat is not protected. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu Tziva Otanu Ushmartem et HaMatzot Matzot Tzrichot Shmira That's the words of the Bi'ur Halakha. Says Apirion Shilomo something unbelievable. He says what that means is even when you're not worried about anything, even when you don't think something's going to happen, even when the purpose of the mashkiach being on the train is literally redundant, for the sake of the word shemira, it does not require, it requires a focused, a determined, a kavana-driven protection of this. I'm watching. Is anything happening? Is anything not happening? My friends, so too, the Gemara is saying the same thing. Shemirat Shabbat does not mean that you guard it so it wasn't broken. Shemirat Shabbat means I'm actively guarding the Shabbat. I'm looking for ways that it might be broken. I'm looking for ways that it might be profaned. And I'm navigating around them. It's a proactive thought process. And that, says the Sefer, is what they did not have on that first Shabbat. They wanted to go out to get matzot. You already broke Shabbat. Not, not you didn't break the halachot of Shabbat. But you broke Shmirat Shabbat. The protection seal. And that's why the Gemara uses that language. Il male shameru Yisrael Shabbat rishona. This to me teaches us a tremendous understanding in the process of what keeping Shabbat actually looks like. Guarding Shabbat actually looks like. And I want to share something that I think is very powerful in this realm. They didn't break Shabbat. They thought of it. Shabbat's already broken. Let me give you an example. The Pasuk says about Shabbat, V'shamru reisa da Shabbat, La'asot da Shabbat dorotam berit olam. It's an eternal covenant. Be'ni u'ben b'nei so between me and you. Ot hi le'olam. This is our sign. This is our covenant. If you think the Pasuk is being extreme, consider the following example. A fellow is engaged to be married. And he comes to the synagogue. And he sees that downstairs in the synagogue, they are having a singles event. And he tells his engaged, his arus, he says, sweetheart, if you could just wait here a few minutes, they're having a singles event downstairs. I just want to go see if there's anyone down there that's better for me than you. I'm just going to go check. You know, I'm just going to shoot. Look, it's a quick look. Shouldn't take me more than two, three minutes. I'll just run through the room quickly. Wait here. You know, they say, if I'm not back in five minutes, leave. <laughs> She's doing the same thing. Though. Right? Now, Hazit, she's sitting upstairs. Hada, she's shocked. It's all finished. She can't even open her mouth. She's like, what did you just say to me? You're going to go downstairs to check out the goods? What? What? But she's so shocked, she doesn't respond. The guy goes downstairs, comes back, three minutes later, he says, okay, honey, let's go. She goes, okay, honey, let's go. Don't you, okay, honey, let's go, me? He's like, what? I went, I checked downstairs. There was no one there better than you. 
If this girl is related to you, <laughs> advise her to run for her life. Why? He didn't break Shabbat. Yeah, but he tried. You got it? They went out. They tried to collect the man. There was no man. And we're sitting there. I don't understand. Bomb question. They didn't break Shabbat. Ought he? It's a covenant between us and God. It's a relationship between us and God that is broken, not by the fact that we've done something, but by the fact that we want to or that we are willing to do something. That's enough. That Shabbat is no longer protected. You're not protecting the relationship anymore. My friends, this idea becomes super large. Because I want to go back to that pasuk. Ushmartem et hamatzot. Ushmartem et hamatzot. That's what the pasuk says. That's how we understood this idea of what shemirah means. Of being careful. I don't know what the story is with the Eruv. I'm not sure what's going to be with the elevator. Did you check the elevator? If it's a kosher Shabbat elevator, did you check it? No, it's probably fine. That's not Shemirah. You broke Shabbat even if the elevator is kosher. You got that? You, you didn't break, the, you didn't do one of the Averot of Shabbat, but if you went in it and you didn't check, that's already the guy saying, I don't care. Is this clear? It's fragile, the relationship. It's fragile, Shabbat. It's got the stickers all over it. Handle with care. And then you're thinking, is this mut'ar? Is this asur? And when a person goes into it that way, then they're always erring on the side of caution because they're trying to protect something. And they don't know all the threats to it. It's important, very important to learn the halachot of Shabbat. Because our Sfarim tells us, if a person doesn't study the laws of Shabbat, there is zero, says the Chafetz Chaim, zero chance that you're keeping Shabbat if you don't know the laws of Shabbat. Zero. Why? Simple. I'll give you an example. The guy's like, what could be rabbi? I, don't, I walk to shul two blocks. I don't even have an elevator in my building. I walk up the stairs. I come pray. I go home. I eat. What's, how, how am I going to break Shabbat already? Did you, did you cook the food by mistake because you don't know the halachot? How'd you make your coffee? Did you do the two cups when you made the tea? Did you do that, the whole thing with the kele shilishi? Do you know the laws of that? Was there dust on your suit and you went like that? Eh, you're out. <laughs> did you do that? Out. Did you know that? Your shirt was dirty. You had to, you're eating breakfast. Crumbs, a little stain. You got a little te- wet towel. Milaben, out. You understand? These are things that you wouldn't even think of because you didn't learn the laws yet. You got to know the laws in order to keep Shabbat. But my friends, someone's thinking, Shema Israel, impossible. All these laws, I can never do it. And you know what I always say? Of course you can. You just don't know how valuable Shabbat is. You just don't know how valuable Shabbat is. So there's a trend on social media. You know, today, more than TV and more than videos, they say people, YouTubers, and all these crazy people who make their own videos, they get more people watching their stuff than any movie, any TV show ever had. So there's a famous shtick that one of these guys does. And I read about it in the newspaper, actually. Old school. And I could not believe it until I Googled it. There's a guy who buys a brand new Ferrari or Lamborghini. He picks from a lottery 20 guys, whatever. All the 20 guys surround the Lamborghini. Put your hand on the car. Last person to take his hand off the car keeps the car. There's a guy in the front sitting there three hours, four hours, five hours. He's going to need to take a dump. Please, can I leave? No, the rules are. I don't care what the reason is. 
You have to go to the bathroom, out. The guy's waiting, waiting. Oh, finally takes his hand off. First guy out. Second guy's starving. You know, he uh, hasn't eaten now in uh, 12 hours. Takes his hand off the car. Next guy, this, next guy. People are on the phone with the other hand. They're doing this, the other hand. Some guy's psyching out the other guy. He's like, oh, there's a bee on your shoulder. Ah, ow, whatever, like this. The finally the last guy, I don't even know how long it was, maybe 30 hours. 30 hours. And he took the car. He wins the car. And the guy does this with other things as well. And I thought to myself, Imagine that's how you thought of Shabbat. This guy can't use the elevator, he can't drive a car, he can't do this, he can't do... million things he can't do. But he ain't moving. He's not moving. Talacha and Shabbat, you're allowed to walk. You could go to the bathroom, right? But there's things you need to refrain from. If the thing is valuable enough, you don't move. That's the concept of Shmirat Shabbat. But people don't understand that Shabbat is much more valuable than a car or than any money. In fact, the, we say in Kabbalat Shabbat, Ki hi mekor ha-beracha. al Khamim give an example of a fellow who goes to a hardware store. And he goes to the hardware store and he buys, he buys a, uh, what's it called? A pipe. And he comes back a few days later to the hardware store. He says, the pipe is defective. The guy says, how could a pipe be defective? He says, I don't know what to tell you. He goes, I hooked it up to the thing, to my, uh, to my ho- water supply. No water's coming out of the, ho- the pipe, the hose. The guy says, okay, take another one. Three days later, the guy's back again. No pipe, no, the water's not coming through the hose. He says, okay, take another one. After he's replaced the second one, the guy says, what could be wrong already with a pipe? It's just a cylinder. It's empty. What are you doing? He goes, come, he goes, you can come look if you want. The guy is curious. Goes around the corner from the hardware store to the guy's house. He sees the guy attached the pipe to the water thing. And he goes, look, you see, it's not working. He's like, idiot. You didn't, you didn't turn on the water. You didn't turn on the water. Who cares that you attached the pipe? You didn't turn on the water. All the birachot in this world are tzinorot. They are pipes. They are pipes for Shefa, for Beracha, for Mazal, for Shiduch, for children, for Shalom Bayit, for Ahava, Ahva, Shalom, Vereut, all the good stuff. And you plug your Tzinor in to the heavens and you're like, come to Papa. And nothing happens. And you didn't open the water. You didn't turn on the Berez. You didn't turn on the spigot. You didn't. Shabbat is Mekor HaBeracha. Could you imagine how careful you have to be with guarding the mekor haberacha, the source of all blessing? So much so that ilmale shameru Yisrael Shabbat Rishona, if they'd kept that first Shabbat, we would be untouchable forever. There would never have been a nation that would have been able to, t- to lift a finger. You think back to all the tragedies Am Yisrael has suffered from. But in that moment... We as a people, we were pogem. It's like we took that source of blessing and we shoved into the, into the tzinor, we shoved uh, some, you know, cement. And now you're getting a trickle. Th- this is the power of Shmirat Shabbat. And the, uh, the righteous tzaddikim, what they would do all the time, is a person would come, they'd cry about shiduchim, they would say, are you keeping Shabbat? They come, they will cry about Parnassah. He, the rabbi, are you keeping Shabbat? Promise me you'll try and keep Shabbat. Promise me you'll light Shabbat candles. Promise me you'll do the Kiddush every Friday night. Promise me you'll have the family around the table. Because ultimately, every rabbi, every, everything give you the beracha, but without Shabbat, you have the piping system, but no one turned the water on. That is the power of Shabbat. So maybe I'm going to ask in this video, for, for anyone that listened to this point, I'm going to ask one favor. You know, my cousin is in the hospital with his son, and we need a big Yeshua. 
And uh, Shabbat is the Mekora Beracha, it's the source of all blessing. So many of the people that are listening to this recording already keep Shabbat. But like we learned today, there's many different levels of keeping Shabbat. There's just not breaking it consciously, but there's also protection. There's also ensuring that I don't get myself into situations where I then didn't have a choice, where I plan ahead. Where if I'm going somewhere, I ask the hotel, is there a way to get upstairs? Or what it's, what's it like in the corridor? Can I get there without turning on all the lights? You know, all these different types of things that a person needs to know for Shabbat, right? Can I ask that for the next few Shabbats, or maybe if you could take it on yourselves, to improve in one way your Shemirat Shabbat as a Zechut? For Yaakov ben Tamar Malka. For those that listen that don't keep Shabbat, if I could ask you to keep this Shabbat completely. For those that keep Shabbat, to try and take on one element of Hidur, of a, a better element, a better way, of a stricter way of keeping Shabbat for the next couple of weeks um, until we're out of the woods. This, this time is critical in the Rifu'ah Shalema for him, Be'ezrat Hashem. So please, if you can, Help us turn on the water, turn on the shefa, turn on the beracha. We have a lot of pipes in place, a lot of tehillim sayers, a lot of things happening. But we need, but we need the mekor ha-beracha. That is the answer to many of life's problems, is doubling down in a hidur, in protecting and keeping Shabbat just that little bit better. May Hashem bless us with everything that we need. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.